today we're going to do a pseudo unboxing kind of how to video on how to create your own planners at home. Now, these are the Love It Agency planners. One is the Ultimate YouTube planner, and another is just an undated planner that's called the Love It Planner. Now, these planners were given to me in exchange for an honest review, and they were given to me over a year ago. I honestly just had so many unboxings, they just kind of got lost in the shuffle, but I do believe these are really great examples of planners that you can make at home on your own. Like, literally use the printer you have sitting in the corner of your office. You can print these out, they're eight and a half by 11. You can also print these covers and the plastic coils. You could just wrap those yourself. So let's go ahead and take a look at these planners as well as let's go over how you could replicate this for yourself in your own house. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday and I do unboxings on Saturday. Now today is not a Saturday because even though this is an unboxing, I really want to make it more of a how-to video because I know a lot of you are right now at home and you're thinking of online businesses that you could start and it isn't very feasible right now to run around town and go to printers and quite honestly when we talk about ordering printers in bulk i always recommend getting them from china and right now there is a huge delay in getting things shipped over and getting orders put in and getting them processed so let's just talk about planners that you can create in your own house now all of the love it planners are 25 dollars, so you could make a nice little profit from this you know, buy a huge ream of paper. So let's just go through the steps first and I will do a flip through so you can see what's inside of these planners. But two really important things. One, it has to be eight and a half by 11 because standard paper is going to be so much easier for you to work with. And I know what you're thinking. I really love A5s. I really love A6s. But if you want to sell a physical planner, having to cut each of those pages every day is going to be painstaking and trying to feed special sized pages into your your home printer is going to be even less fun. So let's just talk about making a standard eight and a half by 11. There's nothing wrong with that. They still look beautiful. The second thing is it's going to have to be black and white. You are two things. One, you are going to go broke trying to buy a ton of color ink. And if you have an inkjet, they are incredibly slow. And if you have a laser printer, you're going to want to just use black and white. So it will be much faster. Now, the first step is one, just to stock up on a ton of paper, like buy a huge ream of paper. You can purchase it at any uh, office supply store or you can order it online. The second thing is to order some thicker like cardstock paper. It doesn't have to be that thick even. It could be something uh, just a standard. You can see these are kind of flimsy, so they're they're not even that fancy. And you want to also purchase and invest in, in my opinion, a uh, laminator so you can kind of laminate the top. Now these have more of a glossy overlay on them, so they probably were printed somewhere else. Um, but just to do this at home, you could 100% use what I use, which is the Heidi Mink. Uh, foil because then you could also add gold foiling to your cover to make it even fancier. Uh, now the third step is to find coils. I actually think the Heidi Swap O coil machine, the Heidi Swap uh, cinch is actually easier to work with. However, uh, that is meant for a smaller book, not eight and eight and a half and by 11. So I would definitely go with the plastic coils and you can just wrap those yourself at home. Um, it just takes a few minutes or you can buy a machine that will help you to do that. Now the third thing, obviously, is you need to design the interior. Now, all of the planners in my shop are 100% eight and a half by 11, because I'm assuming you could also sell them as printables, uh, but for the purposes of today's video, you could actually buy any of the planners in my shop 100% just start printing them and they're ready to go. You'll just have to change it to grayscale. Now you could do, because you're doing these at home, I think the hugest advantage that Erin Condren and Plum Paper and even Golden Coil have is that they create customized planners. There is a thousand percent no reason that you cannot invest in hiring a developer to do some JavaScript, let people pick some different layouts and choose their own designs for planners. Um, so that is number four. Now, number five is 
don't add tabs. I know it's so tempting and so sexy to have tab dividers in your planner, but if you're just trying to get up and running at home, do not worry about tab dividers. Those are a nightmare <laughs> too. I mean, you can definitely make them at home. I just think tab dividers, 100%, I always outsource them. Um, it's just easier to not have them. And quite honestly, you know, not everybody needs a tab divider, especially when you have workbooks or you have journals or something else and you're doing undated planners. I wouldn't worry about it at all all. Um, so those are my easy peasy steps to get your planner made. Now, the only thing I will say is if you don't have a printer that duplexes, 100% go out and invest in one of those. I will leave a link below to the printer that I recommend that does duplexing both for scanning and for output and does it pretty quickly and a really great job. And I would 100% also purchase the uh, warrant, extended warranty or the service or tech calls or whatever it is so that when your printer fails, you have help. And even better, if you can buy two printers, you're in great shape. So let's just recap that list really quick before we start going in and flipping through these planners. So the first one I said is to stock up on a lot of paper. The second is to stock up on some nice cardstock for the covers. The third is to invest in a Heidi Swap Mink. Um, and I know I don't even get money from the Heidi Swap recommendations I make. She just makes really great products. Um, and then the third thing is to invest in the Heidi Swap Cinch for making oak oil or just go ahead and find some regular spiral coils on your own. Plastic is perfectly fine. Uh, you can obviously get metal or rose gold or whatever you want. I've actually taken plastic ones and I purchase rose gold spray paint and I just go out in my backyard and I just spray, spray paint them rose gold and they look gorgeous just as is. Um, the other thing that you're going to want to do is invest in a printer. Oh, well, before that, you need to design the interior, uh, but invest in a printer that can do duplexing on the front and the back. That's all it means. You don't want to feed pages through, have to flip them over and then feed them through again. It's like, I don't know why. I always get confused. Like, are the pages going to go in the right order? Uh, if it has a paper jam, you're you're just in, yeah, it's just a big mess <laughs> trying to have to refeed that through. Uh, and plus, quite honestly, it's going to save you a ton of time. Now, I will leave information for the printer I'm using. And also, if you have two printers, a big bonus right there as well. And make sure that everything is in black and white and forget all about tab dividers. All right, let's go ahead and flip through the Love It Planet and see what she's done with the interior of hers. All right, Love It sent over two planners. We're gonna look at the undated general planner first. So it is the fabulous planner designed by loveitagency.com. So you have some quotes, you have a page for vision, uh, you have the month at a glance. So this is dated one, um, great things that happen. And they used a nice like light gray box to kind of differentiate it, even though they don't have colors. So you can see the dark gray uh, against the black. So I appreciate that. It's tough to do when you have a black and white everything. Expense tracker, week at a glance, week at a glance again. So you have Monday through Friday, and then you just have two boxes for Saturday, Sunday, and then your gratitude list. Again, another week at a glance, and then a page for notes, and then we move right into two. Now, this does rinse and repeat all throughout. Um, you have your goals for the month and your top for the th the year to remind you. Then it talks about income and savings and great things that happen, leads and sales. Uh, so it's a little odd to have this at the beginning of the next month. Usually you'd see month at a glance, maybe at the back of the month, or I don't know if you're meant to go back to this page at the end of the month and return back to page one. Uh, but again, we have a rinse and repeat again of everything, the week at a glance, the notes, and then three, and then we go right into the end. So let's skip ahead to the end. I believe you get you know, 10, you get 12 of these. And at the end, there's nothing, just a blank page. So that's pretty much the end of this one. Now, the other one, the Ultimate YouTube Planner, is a 12-month fill-in-the-blank calendar and checklist to organize every aspect of YouTube. Now, I actually don't know if they have a YouTube channel. Um, I know they have another book just like this, this for Instagram. And it looks like we have each of the months, again, uh, signified by that big 
number, the one, two through 12. And then you get month at a glance over here. And then you have a theme for your month. And then you have the five weeks out of the month. And I guess they're advocating that you do three videos per month. Um, v is for film and edit video and t is for designing the thumbnails which are major parts of any video and then over here we have video title date scheduled newsletter blog post how to advertise it uh for each of those three videos for i guess one particular week and then some area for notes and i i guess where you want to position it and again remember i did mention that i got this a year ago that's why google plus is there i'm sure they took it off since it no longer exists um and then you get five of these week at a glance pages, a notes page, just like we saw in the other book. And then you get, again, the uh, number two for month two, and then the same rinse and repeat schedule all the way throughout the whole thing. So looks good. Uh, the only thing I would add, because I am a YouTuber, is to add some content upgrades because I put those in there. Uh, keywords, tags are really important. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, some place where you could do stats, although honestly, you probably would just use Google analytics for that. So yep. Overall, I think it does help with planning. So what you think? I thought these were really cute. Great job with just using black and white and no tab dividers and just getting up and running because sometimes it's just a matter of putting something out there. You don't have to make it perfect. You don't have to work with a huge vendor in China. Uh, you can just start making things out of your house and providing value and selling products to people. Plus, it's a really great opportunity for you to get feedback, especially on the content and what people do and don't like and how they use them. So... If you would like to create your own planner, make sure to sign up for my free course, Planner 101. I will leave a link to that below, and I hope everyone's having a fabulous day, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.